Southern California, welcome to the Unscared Sports Show. It's Wednesday, May 23rd. I am Doug Katona, along with my co-host... Brian McKenzie. Been a whirlwind again, right? Hasn't stopped. I mean, he's getting, re- he's getting ready to move, by the way. And so for all of you that are up in the Bay Area, he's willing to see you as much as you want to come up and train with him. Stop I'll- it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> so... Uh, this is this is we're actually going to still be doing the show obviously flying back and forth um we haven't told our producer eli rodriguez that yet but he'll learn that soon actually he probably just learned it just learned it sorry about that um but we've got a lot to talk about and of course a lot of you know that we have a special guest on the show today jeremy kinnick uh who man just performed above and beyond just i saw him move personally uh, taking him through some of his warm-ups and i'll tell you what in my opinion, he was the best athlete that I saw out there on the guy's side. He really moved well. I didn't get to see him move. <laughs> um, so I'll be the judge of that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just knew, I, I just got to see how he was going to perform. And, uh, you know, he, he performed exactly the way that we, um, that I expected. Um, and he began to understand as it, as it uh, and he'll convey that, you know, he'll convey what he experienced. Um, but it, it, as the event went on, you know, yeah. um, he just remained consistent and actually got better as he continued. So I think that was my observation watching. I've seen a couple of the regionals, and I was there live at, at Southern California watching the women war and watching the guys, which was also a war. I mean, a lot of a lot of people I think were watching the women, but I'll tell you what, the the guys were battling pretty hard. I mean, um, Grundler, you know, over forty doing it and doing really well, and, and John Perra looks fantastic, and Ken Leverich. I mean, there's some. There's some real contenders out there, and, yeah. And so that was really good to see. I thought, from the Southern California perspective, there's some serious fights out there. So, and I know you were in NorCal, and pretty much uh, you, you saw the same thing this past weekend. Yeah, NorCal was uh, pretty intense for the men. Um, the women were it was you know it was just as intense, but uh, you know the I think the fight really was between like the the second third place um, or even within the first two, but um, it, that doesn't really make sense, but. <laughs> Makes sense to me. The first three were really kind of battling for the first three spots, right. more or less. Um, you know, and Jenny LeBaul kind of locked that up, and she looked good. And Annie Sakamoto, once again, man, here she so is. So good to Fuck. see. You know, I, I got to talk and hang out with Annie for just a brief minute, and, you know, it was just like, you know, she's like, "How holy shit, how am I continuing to do this? And she's like, I keep telling Gary, who's her coach, Dude, I think I need a day off. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a little older than everybody else, but, uh, you know, and uh, I, I get that big time at this point in my life um you know where it's hey a little more time off you yeah. know the better I, you know better i'm feeling so yeah and and of course this is the final weekend we've got the northeast northwest and and europe so yeah. i'm kind of looking for, i'm looking forward to it from a coaching standpoint so i can watch it and get it over with yeah you know start focusing on the yeah. real thing right? i'm uh yeah i'm just, i'm just a little burnt regional burnt at this point yeah you are <laughs> Uh, you know, but you know it's exciting, um, and it, it, it's 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 good to see. But uh, I'm kind of burnt, and just like need to need to simmer down, get everybody back to training, and then ramp up. And here comes the games, which is just going to be a gnarly weekend. For, uh, yes, seriously, yeah. it's uh, it's going to be a gnarly weekend. But but to me, it's it's um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it just from the standpoint of you know all the years hard work 
Um, the main objective was getting our people to the games. Now they're at the games. Now it's really time to focus on those weaknesses, make sure the skill and the technique is kind of shored up a little bit more and, and build whatever uh, lasting amount of strength you can, you can squeeze out. But now a lot of it's, it's recovery, it's how you're eating, um, how you're sleeping. It's kind of the things outside of your training. That, how you run your life. How you run your life. Um, that's the biggest thing I'm seeing, you know, um, is I've got a couple <laughs> that the athletes that are just like doing way too much and trying to train for this thing and want to do, want, want that podium. And it's like, you know, you've got to really realize that, you know, yeah. the, that rest and recovery comes into play big time. And, um, you know, people don't realize it, but that's why the, you know, the best in the world at other sports and other things that have been here before are doing what they do. They're mm. getting that rest and recovery before they, you know, have to get back at it again. Yeah. So, so uh, we're wrapping up regionals, and you know, one of the the kind of a personal side for us has has been watching the development and growth of, of Jeremy Kinnick, and I think that you've done a fantastic job um, coaching, programming him out, and I've seen him um, really improve. I mean, his this past weekend, I had no less than three or four people come up to me and say. That guy's so shredded. What happened to him? You know, and and so he follows direction. He does. I'm telling you, <laughs> if there's anybody who follows direction, it's Jeremy Kinnick. <laughs> so let's find out. We can talk about Jeremy, but better that he talks about Jeremy when we ask the questions. So Jeremy, come on uh, to the show. Welcome. Hey, just get out of the way. Or All right. I was hoping I'd get to sit on your lap, Brian, but I guess no, maybe we're not, next we're, time. we aren't going to put you on my lap. <laughs> so Jeremy. Um, First of all, congrats on going back to the games. How does it feel? Thanks. It feels uh, incredible. It's, um, I mean, that's why I trained so hard, and that's why yeah. I, I came to Brian. You know? Yeah. What's been the biggest thing for you, um, and this is good for everybody that's watching out there. I mean, we all have our strengths, our weaknesses. On yeah, That's right. Get the three fuel promotion going there with your shirt. Uh, so everybody sees that. Um, uh, what's, what's been the biggest change for you in the last year, do you think, from last year? What's been the biggest difference in in your growth as an athlete? What have you really worked on? Or is there something that you just said, you know what, I'm glad this happened for me. What's What's been the biggest change? Uh, biggest change, I mean, first and foremost, would be working with Brian and uh, um, having somebody tell me what to do rather than me just choosing, oh, I feel like doing this today or, you know, not really any rhyme or reason. Yeah. Um, thinking about recovery, thinking about resting, um, keeping myself healthy. I never even, it was never even a thought. I never planned how I would eat. I never, you know, thought about cool down. I would just warm up just as a, just to warm up. It was, you know, all this stuff, uh, you know, I've been crossfitting for a few years and, and I never even thought about that stuff. So that, that was huge for me. Um, the, the biggest changes I think for, for my training have just been, uh, you know, going into event. I, I don't feel like there's anything that I'm, um, bad at. I'm not, I'm not the best, but I'm not bad at anything. Yeah. Um, I'm more well-rounded. I'm, uh, you know, I've, Brian's helped me get rid of, I think, all of my weaknesses. Mm. Um, is it now? Is that true? So, from a coaching side, do you are you happy with? Has has he really addressed those weaknesses? And, and is there anything right now that you think he does need to focus on going into the games to do better? Is there something in particular? Uh, no. Actually, with with, with him, no. Um, the um, you know, maybe maybe the handstand push up stuff, which yeah. we know. I mean, which you know, just it's not like two twenty five deadlift is a problem, but uh, right. you know, it, it's it, the handstand push up thing, which is just going overhead, pressing overhead, um, and that tends that's actually that tends to be a, a problem with most athletes that we see. So, true. with that said, uh, that that would be the only thing that I would say. Um, and from a coaching standpoint, my my focus at this point is just increasing his volume is such to where it's most effective yeah. to where he can has the ability to recover between workouts doing two and you know maybe one two and three a days although he's got auxiliary work that he's got to do in between um you know that he actually recovers between those workouts and then can get back and put out put out an effort to do those workouts so um and, 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 and jeremy do you think that i mean i mean maybe you can share with everybody i mean this is a really busy guy it's, it's not like you have all day to recover and lay around. So maybe share with everybody, if, if you don't mind, and uh, you don't have to be really private about it, but <laughs> kind of what your typical day is like. I mean, I think it's important for people to understand that a lot of the games athletes, um, they don't just get to train three times a day and sleep nine hours a night. And 
maybe just kind of run through your day and then how you deal with that stuff to properly recover. What do you do? Uh, my day, every morning I, I wake up at 5, 5 a.m. I train all of our morning classes, um, so 6 a.m. Till, till noon. Um, I also train a boot camp three times a week at night. Um, plus, I've got two kids, a wife. Um, so mm -hmm. I'll, I try to fit in something in the morning. Um, it doesn't usually happen just because we're busy. Um, and, uh, you know, just I, I live across the street from the gym. So I've got it a little bit easier than some. Um, I can run home, grab food. Um, so I how many classes a week are you coaching? Uh, a minimum is three a day. Wow. Um, up to five or five or six. It just depends on the day, how busy we are that week. Yeah. So. But you're running the gym. Yeah, I run the. I run the run, gym. You run the gym. Yeah. So it's your, not, your brother's off lecturing the, and yeah, um, you know. The I'm easy part's training. That's the yeah. easy part. Uh, you know, training people. The hard part is all the other stuff that people don't see. So, what sort of advice would you give to people that are watching, that are box owners, that are also trying to train hard to try to balance everything in life? I think you've done a really good job of it, um, knowing you obviously, but. Maybe you can just share some of your, uh, what would you recommend to some people that are having a hard time balancing all that? Because it seems like we talk to a lot of people that have a hard time with that. How do you do, how do you, what would you give them for advice? Uh, I, I've, I've just set up my schedule to where I can maximize, I can get the most out of myself as a trainer, a box owner, you know, running the gym and, and, and as well as um, um, being able to train and work out. Yeah. Um, I get it, I get all that work done in the morning. Um, I try to get some workouts in, handle it, um, you know, midday, early evening, then I'm done with the family. Um, it, it, it's just, it's just setting yourself up, you know, yeah. figuring out what you need to do. Um, it didn't, it wasn't always like this. Um, I used to have to train mornings and evenings and, and just kind of fit stuff in. Yeah. But, uh, my wife helps me out tremendously with, uh, prepping food and, Letting me now. I'm ta apparently I need to take naps, so now I'm taking a nap, and she takes the That's kids. That's just because he took a nap yesterday. And he, was, <laughs> he was all excited. When did, about I, when did I tell you about taking a nap? Was it yesterday? Go, no, go. <laughs> I took a nap yesterday because I felt the nap come on. The diesel and I worked hard. <laughs> so, but she's. I mean, for the weekend, for the regional weekend, I had all my stuff in Tupperware ready to go. I didn't think about it. It was just there. Wow. So. I mean, having that, you know, I can't take all the credit for for what I've done. My Jonathan's. Yeah. been amazing with just allowing me to do whatever I need to, to be able to train when I need to train as much as I need to train I think that was really cool at um, having that support network and you and you do I mean you have your family around you you have Brian you have me you have John you have Mo you have everybody kind of around you and yeah. that it also gives you kind of that sense of peace and calm right yeah, I mean yeah, it absolutely. really makes a big difference have you I mean have you seen is that something that's unique in him do you think and I know you're very, your your faith is very strong that's a big part of what of what you're about which I admire that I mean how do you kind of factor in all that stuff I mean it, it does it make it easier I, for you or more difficult for you that he's got so many of the things going on and all the support network do you I, have to I, manage I, that actually too? With, J, with, with Jeremy he uh, he has it pretty dialed um, you know the, the only thing with Jeremy that and I think this is a male female thing because I, I work with one, two, three, four athletes that are female, one in particular that, you know, whatever. But, you know, two, I work with a few males, and the males are different in the fact that they basically just listen and there's not a whole lot of communication back, right. like whether they're hurting or not. You know, um, you know, I'll see on his recovery because we do re we, we do some recovery stuff where I see it every day where if I'm starting to see a dip or I, it, stuff comes over via email and I look at it. Anytime he inputs something, boom, it pops up in an email and I see it mm. um, and, and I know what's going on with him in that manner. Um, other than that, I think because of his family situation um, and his faith and whatever, yeah. you know, and, and all that, um, you know, cause I've got a couple, you know, between him and Lindsay, they both are very yeah. into that, yeah. um, which is great. Yeah. Um, you know, and TJ Murphy's actually, he, he's written a piece, I think he's writing a piece about this is the fact that I'm, I'm not like anti any of that, but it's just, I, I come from a totally different background and, and we work so well together yeah. and I just, I, I respect the fact of what they do and how they do it. And I think vice versa, they respect what I do and how I do it. And, you know, there's no, you know, it's not oil and water. It's um, it's more so of just you know him having that unit. Whether it's not only family but friends and the yeah. people and the support that he has around him, you know, and and a lot of the athletes that I coach have that exact same thing going on, and 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 I think people need that. 
Do you think that, um, you know, for those of you that don't know, uh, Jeremy and I, we talk a lot about baseball. We were both former baseball players, and, and there's a certain degree of, 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 of discipline you need as a baseball player to work on things. I mean, how much experience or how much you bring that to the table now? Is there any correlation there for you at all? Or do you think that helped you at all being a, a, a baseball player and a pretty good one at that? I mean, you bring any of that experience to CrossFit right now? Yeah, I, I think the uh, the discipline of, uh, I think baseball in particular, and, and you know, other sports as well, but so many reps and so much failure and being okay with it, you know? Mm, good point. Being okay with that, that, that failure and knowing that you have to, you just got to swing the bat and swing the bat and swing the bat or throw the ball or yeah. do reps of thrusters and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I definitely think that it's, it's helped me along with CrossFit, you know, and, and I think to be successful in most sports, but in baseball in particular, you got to be really obsessive and kind of have that, that drive. And, and I, but I think you see that in, in most athletes that, um, that are successful in, in their sport. Do you, uh, you ever get fried? You ever get kind of mentally just are you just like toast ever, or, or, or are you one of those athletes that has a pretty highly motivated and inspired path to want to do really well? I I, I don't I don't remember I can't think of a time that I was. So you've always been that. Like, yeah, I've kind of always been like that. Kind of makes it easier, right? It does huh? yeah, yeah, I I think he nailed nailed it on the head. Is, you know this is this has to become an obsessive thing at this point and if you are not obsessive about what it is you're doing in this sport or any other sport you know um, that you want to be one of the top athletes that this is gonna be your life we, we were we were talking about that earlier right yeah we said you know if, if we looked at um, we kind of had our own discussion um, before we had lunch today and we were talking about kind of the top athletes and and we we both agreed that you know it's it's how you're managing everything else right it's it's how frequently you're communicating with your coach mm -hmm. it's giving them feedback it's reporting in but that's that's part of it it's really it's all the other stuff that's really important to us as coaches but you know now it's all about that it's all about making sure you can you know not get fried not get toasted because now you're kind of in a stage of energy accumulation while you're Going through energy expiration, and you got to find that fine balance so you hit the games at a very high level. Yeah, I agree with that. I, agree. I mean, yeah, I agree. So, um, it, it, so let me ask you a question, uh, Jeremy, and, and I'm going to get to a question that um, uh, I hope I'm saying his name right. Reagan Sutterfield asked about our thoughts um, on Tim Noakes' idea about hydration. Um, he was talking about um, sodium and, and how much do you really need. I'll let you address that yeah. in a second, yeah. Jeremy. Maybe you know share with everybody. Um, has hydration, how important has hydration versus food been for you? Have you made some changes in hydration? And, and what's been your biggest change in your nutrition over the last year? Uh, yeah, I mean, more water, uh, more, um, um, uh, what is it called? Aqua hydrate type, well, electrolyte water. So I just yeah, 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 um, yeah. And really noticing a big difference when I'm hydrated and when I'm not um, being tired in the middle of a workout, um, dragging. And like I have no energy yeah. um, when everything else is the same except for my hydration um, what did you eat at the regionals what were you eating in between workouts I, I don't like to I I follow zone um, I do I eat a clean zone but uh, but I, fo I, fo I follow the, the portions um, I eat more fat and so forth but mm -hmm. um, during the day I like fruit um, berries mm -hmm. you know strawberries blueberries raspberries that kind of stuff um, easily digestible uh, protein um, Chicken, not really steak. Try to stay away from steak when I, during the day, but uh, so you're more a chicken and egg guy. Chicken, chicken and egg for during the day, and then at night steak and and, uh, and vegetables as many as I can. Um, but I eat a lot more carbs than I think a lot of people do. Um, but, but carbs in the form of carbs in the form of fruit, fruit and vegetables, yeah. and fruit only really uh, berries. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, what are your thoughts then on? And, and we should address. Yeah. We're getting a lot of questions I, I coming in on this, but I got it. Let, let's talk about that for a moment. For those of you that are training hard, um, hydration is a big issue. We talk about it all the time, and, and I'll let you go with that one and talk yeah. about the balance of sodium versus plain water. Um, it's really simple, and um, you know you can test this yourself. Is you know go get something like Aqua Hydrate, and um, you know get a case of it, and uh, get get a case of water that doesn't that doesn't have an electrolyte balance and you know don't add anything new you know new to your system whatever blah 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 you know I, I don't care if you're measuring the blood or not um 
All I know is this, is that when I drink something that's got a balance in it like that, that it's got not only the pH balance, but it's also got the electrolytes in it, is that I feel better. I don't drink, I don't have to drink as much water yeah. where I, when I don't, and because this happens frequently because I don't always have the water because I got to go travel or I've got to go do something is I start drinking other waters that don't have any of that stuff in it and I don't feel as good. Yeah. Whether that's psychological or not, fine. Here, I had a conversation with Dr. Brian Austin Hickey who runs the exercise science department at Florida A&M. Um, he's actually going to be putting, he, we, he and I, we're, we're inputting some stuff into uh, the book in the final nutrition chapter. But what Jeremy just explained when he's not as hydrated and he starts to feel slow and sluggish, it, what happens when you are not hydrated enough um, is that the blood becomes viscous. Um, it's not only that the tissue isn't, it isn't flow, you know, the, the, um, the, you're not getting the tissues to you know, slide. slide on those sliding surfaces, but the blood starts to become viscous. So what happens actually in workouts that are requiring more than 20 minutes or 15 minutes of work, where you're kind of at a constant effort, because once you get out to that 10, 15 minute range, everything kind of levels out. You don't go up and down, depending on the type of athlete you are, but if when you're at this higher level or whatever higher level you are, endurance or, you know, rowing or whatever, that heart rate levels out. And if that heart rate starts to climb as it goes, that's that's usually a determiner of hydration because the blood becomes viscous. Therefore, the heart has to work harder to start to pump that stuff. Okay, so to go with the sodium in the diet, sure. If you, or you don't need sodium in, and you can drink to thirst. Absolutely, thirst is a great indicator for you being slightly dehydrated, and you should be doing it. But the problem is, is what were you doing before then to get there, right? So did you hydrate enough to get there and did you miss that moment of opportunity? Because usually in this, there's plenty out there on this, thirst is the last indicator of, yeah, you're already dehydrated, dude. Um, so now back to the sodium play, what have you removed out of your diet? Now, Jeremy eats a zone, a pretty clean zone. So I'm guessing he probably has decent sodium intake, which is sodium is going to be the, the number one yep. loss in what it is you're doing um, it, with sweat. But there's other factors in there too, magnesium, calcium, and um, chloride. Uh, chloride and all, all these yep. things, right? But sodium is the main loss, okay? So if in his diet he's sound with the, with the sodium, he definitely doesn't need to, pr he probably doesn't need to overdo that unless he's going all day long at something, okay? Yep. Where he is depleting himself. He's not taking in nutritionally anything with sodium in it. You are going to need to, and there are plenty of studies out there that show that. But why don't we always talk about the studies? Because there's plenty of studies that counter, counter, yeah. contradict everything that's out there. What you need to do is test it. What I think, and you and I have had this conversation, is that cramping and all this stuff is actually a conditioning issue. And that when your diet is sound and you make these things... When you have all this in place, you have the hydration, you have the food, um, you have the electrolytes in your food. You're not yanking out all that stuff. The, you, it all, it's a, actually a conditioning issue that when you're going too hard for too long, you can, your body cannot keep up with that. So the functionality of that in, in, in your central nervous system is poor output and you start to cramp. Well, and I think it's important, you have to remember too, the... The fitter you are, so those of you that are watching, if, if you're like Jeremy, you've got a low body and composition. And I'm not aqua hydrate. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't delivered yet. Uh, if, if you're like Jeremy and you're really lean, you're strong, you're training a couple of times a day. Right now in Southern California, it's warm out. Um, the need to make sure you're topping off is greater than it normally would be versus somebody that's going to walk into Globo Gym and, and go 40 minutes on the elliptical. It's a completely different play. So I think it's really important. And you do set your body up for that. So, um, I mean, anything else you want to add to that, Jeremy? I mean, you, you obviously, are you adding salt to your food or are you getting salt in your food now? And, and are you even aware of the sodium content or do you just kind of just wing it and go? Um, I, I add sea salt to most, mostly every meal. There you go. I salt, I salt everything. So we do with our food? So, the way we, what we do, yeah. That's, you yeah. know, that's what I do at home when I cook. Just salt out of the food, you yeah. know, and I, and I pretty much am drinking aqua hydrate. So, and I'm not having, I don't have any cramping issues unless of course 
I've done way more than I normally right. do in a day. Right. And then later that night, I'm sitting there in bed and all of a sudden the hand or the, or the calf locks up. It, it's, yeah. it's amazing. You know, what we're talking about is that you have to eat and hydrate according to your training and conditioning level and energy demands of what you're doing. Yeah. And I think that's really important. Um, so I'm going to switch gears really quick because we're getting towards the end of the show. But I, I got to ask Jeremy about something. A couple of people have asked, what's this thing with butter? <laughs> I, I, I mean, we see it on your Facebook page. You're always talking about butter, and people are going, "What is he talking?" I got, I got. Somebody asked me a couple of times, and you know, I thought instead of me trying to explain it, I would let you explain to everybody what's this fascination or what's this thing with butter. What is it? It's uh, it's just kind of something fun to it's fun to say. You know, we have fun at the gym. Um, something's easy. It's butter. You just picked up something that was that should have been hard and it was easy. Just yell at butter. Um, okay. And then it just kind of morphed into, you know, over the last the last couple of years, morphed into spreading butter. And, you know what's going to happen at, at the games? Hot knife through butter. He's, he's going he's he's to crush a workout and people are going to start throwing sticks of butter. It's like, <laughs> it's like when you're in Detroit. It's and be grass fed. And, 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 and the Detroit Red hot. Wings do really well. They throw <laughs> octopus on the ice, you know. Yeah. We're, they're going to throw yeah, sticks of yeah. butter at you. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Johnson's working on a, a butter I'm sure he is. Shirt. Right I'm, now, I'm, so. sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure he is. Sure he it's is. just fun. It, you know, how life not. It's just, I think it's great. You know, it's kinda, it kind of gets me pumped no, up. No, I think it's great. Is what, so. uh, of, the, of all the workouts at the regionals, uh, was there one or two that were pure butter for you? That you felt <laughs> you just kind of, you were like, you walked out of there going, dude, that was some good stuff. Can I do, go do that one again? Uh, uh, number four and six were a lot of fun. Yeah. You're probably one of the few people that would say that number six was pretty fun. I thought it was great. What did you like about it? Um, besides having a ripped hand, so the toes to bar were challenging. Yeah. Um, it was. I just. I just liked the heavy dead, but you know, body weight movement with the muscle up. You know, and and just I love wall balls. I wish it was fifty wall balls. I mean, it, it would have been nice. Um, everything was great about it except for the burpees on the on the asphalt. That was a little annoying. Yeah. More than anything, but. I mean, it's just I like that. That uh, you look did like you. Get, did you guys do the pistols on the rubber yeah, mat too? Yeah. I, I did not understand that. Like, I don't know why? Why, why were they having the pistols side. on the mat? That you know, your ankles doing this and you can't stabilize. I, I don't practice, usually practice those with shape up, shape up. Yeah. Things, so it was a little <laughs> so, it's very strange. But. Well, like I gotta say, I watched you in the last workout, obviously, and um, my opinion was it had that thing going on like another seven or eight minutes. I think you would end up really crushing that one because you looked yeah, to me like you were fine. struck. Yeah, that you were fine. The last three muscle ups were the easiest part of the workout. Yeah. You know, yeah, and that's the indication of the training having its yeah. effect. Yeah, absolutely, you know, and not being cooked. Yeah. Well, and I think that was a you know, I think that's a good indicator, of probably of what's going to come at the games. I mean, I think that we were talking about it in the car um, to lunch, and um, heck, man, that's some, that's a good sign for you to say that those two workouts, because those two workouts for a lot of people might have been their two worst workouts. There was a, there were not a lot of people finishing yeah. that last workout. This was the season yeah. of broken dreams, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but there's just, you know, I, I, and you know what? Next year, it, it's just, it's going to be even a whole different. I Like like we were talking about earlier, it's like, you know, you're going to see the difference between, like, the, in the women, like, within the top ten. Below that, it's just going to be a whole different story. I just yeah. don't know that people have the commitment level mm-hmm. and the ability to keep up with what's going to happen at that top 10 level. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I think you're going to see um, a big shift in the names at the top. And, and will some stay there? I don't know. I think you're what I've witnessed recently is you're starting to see a whole um, kind of a wave coming of some younger um, blood getting in, into the games, and, and that's not to say, obviously, I mean, you're fantastic, yeah. but I think it's going to be a challenge and harder and harder. I mean, what do mm-hmm. you think about that? I mean, it, from what you've been around several years now, I mean, yeah. how have you, you know, in the last one minute that we have, how have you, what's been your opinion on how things have changed at, at the games level? Uh, I mean, like you said, the commitment, the um, um, just the desire to actually get better at what you're not good at, you know, that's yeah. really challenging to do. And as people are reaching out to coaches, um, that's that's going to be a huge thing because you can't you can't look at yourself and really be honest. Um, you can for a couple weeks, a month, but yeah. it gets old. You know, we don't want to work on what we suck at because we suck at. That's why we're not good at it because right. we don't do yeah. it. Right. You know, no, so just being able to just attack that stuff. Um, um, in yeah. 15 seconds, give me um, one female and one male um, that are competing that you like to watch. Obviously, Lindsey Smith, right, and uh, <laughs> Becca Voigt, my, my two favorite. 
type of thing. Uh-huh. And what about on the, on the guy's side? Is there anybody that you himself. think uh, besides yourself? <laughs> uh, uh, that's, tough that's tough. That's too tough. There's so many awesome guys to watch. Yeah, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot cool. of fun to see everybody out there. Good. All right, um, God, we could spend all day and talk to you, Jeremy. Your, Jeremy was a great guest. Um, last Thanks. couple of things, you want to add anything to to what he said? Or moving forward, we've got uh, about thirty seconds to go. No, I, all good, man. Uh, I think uh, keep an eye out. Um, we're in the final. We're we're about ready to uh, send out a pre order for Three Fuel. So um, yeah, for those of you that are asking about it, Three Fuel is about to actually hit. Um, it's been a long time in the making. We're excited about it. We're excited for you to be able to uh, to get the product. So look at the Three it Fuel. It will Facebook sell out page. first for that first run. I guarantee it's going to sell out in a day or two. So uh, get that order in when we put it up, and then uh, we will start the second process of this thing. See you in two weeks. What you want, what you want, what you want, what you want.